Now we're going to talk about how to solve a certain class of problems called optimization problems. And sometimes they're referred to as max-min problems because what you're trying to do is take a function and either maximize it or minimize it. Okay, so if we have a function that describes something we want to maximize and minimize, then we can use the first derivative of the function to determine what value of the independent variable will result in a relative maximum or minimum value of the dependent variable. Now here's an example. We're going to find two positive numbers such that their product is 192 and the sum of the first plus three times the second is a minimum. So I'll let x be the first number. And y is the second. And their product is 192. And we want to minimize the sum of the first plus 3 times the second. So that means that we're going to make our function be f of x is the first added to 3 times the second. Well, this is supposed to be in terms of x, so I need to find a way to replace y with a function in terms of x. And up here, we get that y is 192 over x. So that means that our function in terms of x is x plus 3 times 192 over x, which is equal to x plus 576 x to the negative 1. This is the function we want to minimize. And so I'm going to take the derivative. And the derivative of x is 1. And the derivative of 576 x to the negative 1 is negative 576 x to the negative 2. And you remember that we want to find relative extrema using our derivative. We're going to set it equal to 0 and solve for x. And I get that x squared has to equal 576, which means that x is plus or minus the square root of 576. And let's get our calculator over here. And I'll turn that on. And we'll take the square root of 576. And it's 24. Good. Nice even number. Now, in the beginning, it said positive numbers. So this is going to be positive 24. And that means that y is uh, 192 divided by 24. Calculator time again. 192 divided by 24 is 8. So those are our two numbers, 24 and 8. And they will give us a minimum of this sum right here. Those two numbers will minimize that sum. OK. So this is a more practical example. An open box is to be made from a square piece of cardboard, 48 inches on a side, by cutting equal squares from the corners and turning up the sides. OK, so I'll call this x and x on each corner. And the question is, what size should these little squares be that we cut out so that the volume is maximized? Now, if I'm starting out with 48 and I'm cutting away x on either end, then that means my new dimension is going to be 48 minus 2x. And if we looked at this box after the sides have been turned up, it's going to look something like this. Right? Our height is x. This 
edge right here is 48 minus 2x, and this edge along here is also 48 minus 2x. So our volume in terms of x is x times 48 minus 2x squared. And that means that our derivative, which we'll get using the product rule, the derivative of x is 1 times 48 minus 2x squared plus x times the derivative of that, which is 2 times 48 minus 2x to the first times the derivative of 48 minus 2x. And simplifying as much as I can, I've got negative 2x times 2 times 2x, which is negative 4x squared, which isn't right, is it, guys? Because the derivative of 48 minus 2x is negative 2. So that means I need to fix that. There we go. So it's going to be negative 4x times 48 minus 2x. Now, do you see that I can factor out a 48 minus 2x? Look, I'm making all kinds of mistakes, aren't I? That should be squared right there. I have a 48 minus 2x squared and a 48 minus 2x to the first. So we'll go ahead and factor that out. And I'm going to get 48 minus 2x minus 4x. So my derivative in factored form is 48 minus 2x times 48 minus 6x. We're going to set that equal to 0 because we want to maximize it. So we want to find our extreme values. And I'm going to get that x is either 24 or 8. Well, what do we use? Think about it. If the whole side is 48 and I cut away 24 from this end and 24 from that end, I'm not going to have any cardboard left to make a box. So that gives us our minimum. OK? That's where our relative min is. And this is where our relative max is. How can we be sure of that? Well, remember you can do a sign chart. So if I do a sign chart for v prime of x, and I know that I have the derivative equal to 0 at 8 and 24, if I pick a number less than 8 and put it in here, say 7, or say 0 even, I'm going to get a positive. If I pick a number between 8 and 24, like 10, I'm going to get a, neg a positive times a negative, which is negative. And then out here, I'll get a positive. So our volume function is doing something like this. It's going up and down like that. So that would give us our maximum volume when we cut 8 inches off of each corner. OK, one more. A rectangle is bounded by the x-axis and the graph of y equals 4 minus x squared. What length and width should the rectangle be to maximize the area? So here's this deal. This parabola is 4 minus x squared. And here's our rectangle bounded by the x-axis and that parabola. And as I move this point around, the volume of that rectangle is going to change. We want to figure out where that point should be so that the volume of the rectangle is maximized. OK? so. Our area, I said volume, didn't I? I meant area. Our area is going to equal, now let's go back to our picture. This is 2x wide, and this is y. So our area is going to be 2x times y. I'd like to write that in terms of x. 
So it's going to be 2x and y is 4 minus x squared. So I get 8x minus 2x cubed. We want to maximize that area, so we're going to take the derivative and set it equal to 0. So it's going to be 8 minus 6x squared. So 0 is 4 minus 3x squared. So 4 thirds is equal to x squared. So the x value we want is 2 over root 3, which is approximately, well, let's see, 2 divided by square root of 3, 1.155. OK. 1.155. So our length is two of those x's, remember? So if I measure our x coordinate, bring that up to 1.15, uh, that's supposedly the biggest rectangle we can fit under there. So the total length is going to be two of those x's. So that'll be 2.309, and our width is going to be 4 minus x squared, and x squared, remember, is 4 thirds. So that's 12 thirds minus 4 thirds is 8 thirds. So when you're doing these max min problems, you're going to get a function, make it in terms of one variable, you're going to take the derivative, you're going to set it equal to 0, and then you're going to solve for x. And if you get more than one answer, make sure you pick the one that gives you the value that you're trying to minimize or maximize. Make sure you understand that from the beginning.